what's our best test? Lockman's. Lockman's, right? So how do we do a Lockman's? 30 degrees and 20 degrees. Good. So the same angle makes it easier to remember. We're going to bring her up to about 30 degrees. Again, if you have the hands, I need to be able to stabilize her both anteriorly and posteriorly. So I'm going to show you the best way, and then I'm going to show you ways that you may have to modify a little bit for your own clinical setting, right? So my hand's big enough that I can get my fingers behind her knee, and I can get my thumb in front of her knee to stabilize the femur. Again, you've got to watch rotation of the tibia, so you want her neutrally rotated. I can do the same thing with the um, tibia, and I'm just push, pulling anteriorly and pushing posteriorly. She is nice and tight, so you don't see any gross abnormal change there. And you don't even see the amount of collateral laxity that she has that as far as that, that's, that's tight knee. Now, if I get her to relax well, I'll actually be able to put a hard end point on it. Feel that bump, bump. Now, when you make it that dynamic, that threatens the patient. But if you want to just feel a hard end point of cruciate, that's how you do it. You make it a little bit more ballistic type of a test, and she'll feel, I can feel it hit. Bump, bump, bump. There's a hard end point. So positive is no definitive end point. Negative is a firm endpoint. Because everybody has an endpoint eventually. Right? When you get her all the way out, it should feel, and I can, even if I pull hard, I'm not going to, to get much motion out of that. And then when I add the ballistic nature, then I can feel the firmness of the endpoint. Questions about that? Biggest mistake clinician to make? They don't have the tibia aligned with the femur. It's the Apley's anterior and posterior drawer. Flex the knee to about 80 or 90 degrees. This morning I gave you all the sensitivities and the specificities. This test is not nearly as accurate, right? But a lot of people still use it. Makes the patient feel like, well, he really tested me or whatever it is kind of thing. So to do an Apley's anterior drawer, Put the patient, again, neutral rotation. Everybody's going to want to flop out on you, so you're going to put them neutral. You're going to make sure their foot's neutral. Then what? Yeah, but you sit on their foot. Because if you just do it here, it tends to see what happened. And you need to tell your patient, and I, I'll do this, I'll forget, and I'll go to sit down, and what's the patient do? They pull their foot out. <laughs> so I want to, hey, I'm going to stabilize your foot by sitting on it. And they look at the size of me and they say, well. <laughs> so I'm going to stabilize her. Next thing I have to do, what am I doing? I'm relaxing her hamstrings. Because if she is holding her knee in flexion, what's that going to do to anterior translation? It'll prevent it. The hamstrings work in concert with the anterior cruciate ligament. That's why hamstring strength and motor control is so important in a cruciate reconstructed patient. Because they pull in the same direction. So if she's holding her knee up like she is right now, I'm going to get a false negative test. So the first thing I do is sit on her foot. The second thing I do is make sure her hamstrings are relaxed. And the third thing I do is just cradle the tibial condyles and stress her anteriorly. And to be honest, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and do the posterior cruciate too. So Apley has a posterior cruciate test as well. The problem with it, and the false negatives or false positives you get, is if she's sitting back in this test, and I pull forward, I say, ah, it's an anterior drawer test. Whereas it really is that her posterior cruciate is deficient. More commonly, the anterior cruciate is deficient, and you go to push backwards, and you say, oh, she's got a posterior cruciate. The other problem with this test is, I really need a second set of eyes to tell me that we have normal joint alignment and congruence here. So that's part of the reason this test is not widely respected in the literature. Not a bad adjunctive thing. 